Okay, it's recording now. Okay, there we go. Ta da! Ta da! Awesome. Alrighty, so, why don't we hit our first scripture? And it's in the book of Matthew, which actually always towards the end. Okay, so Matthew, Matthew what? 20. 20 Ocho. Matthew 28, verse 1? No, ma'am. Let's go to 20, let's go to 18. The 28. Oh, oh okay. Chapter 28, yep. Let me just start at verse. Okay, Matthew 28, 18. Yep, you want to read that for us? And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Uh, Are you going to go on? Sorry, yeah, okay. that's it. Oh, let's see. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So, what do you get from here? That and it's funny because you're reading from that. I used to have a Bible like that when I was studying the Bible at first. Um, so it was different. But yeah. Yeah, because you guys read NIV. I have the KJV. Like in the morning when I read the Bible, I use that one. I just love it. <laughs> but um, then I started uh, off topic, sorry, real quick. So then when I started teaching other women about it, they were like, I don't understand it, so I switched it. But I love that book. I'm glad you brought it. But what do you get from it? No, it's just Jesus telling his um, disciples to go and um, indoctrinate other, to go baptize other people, and um, yeah, and teach them to follow his ways. Yeah. Um, and it's really awesome because in the first part of the scripture it says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So it's like Jesus had all the authority. Like he was God. Like God gave him everything. Like he's the only human who's ever, you know, that God did that to. Um, and it says go therefore and make disciples of all nations. So you have to make disciples. That's something that he was teaching his disciples. Like, okay, you're a disciple, but you have to make disciples. Like, you know. Um, and that's what I love about, like, the church that I attend. It's like... There are scriptures, and some, well, I used to go to a church um, before, and they didn't really, they didn't really tell me, oh, make disciples. So when I first read this, I was like, this is Jesus, you know, his last words on earth. Like, I really want to follow them, you know. I'm really glad that I'm learning to do this, but we have to make disciples of all nations. And how do we do that? Ah. It says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So even, like, you show people the word of God, you know, they become disciples, like, is that where you end? What do you mean? Is that where it ends? Like, you just make a disciple and that's it? According to the scripture in verse 20? Oh, according to the scripture, make disciples and teach them to fall in the way of the Christ? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, once you're a disciple, it's like, it doesn't end there. You know, you have to keep teaching them. You gotta walk with them. You gotta show them the ways of the Bible, like, because no one knows, or certain people, I guess, they don't know the whole Bible, so you gotta teach it to them as well, you know? You can't just be like, all right, you're a disciple, you're good to go. Bye. No, you gotta walk with them and show them. And then it says, and surely, and then it says, teach them to obey everything I have commanded thee. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Like, Jesus is always gonna be there with us. Like, God's always there for us, but we have to be making disciples. We have to be living that lifestyle. We can't just go to church and, and say, that's it, we're going to church. No, we have to follow the scriptures. So, what do you get from here? From the scripture. Make disciples and have them follow Christ. Yeah, pretty much just, you know, live the lifestyle of what Jesus is calling us to do. And this is the the Great Commission, and it's a command. It's like not God's, it's not Jesus' opinion. It's like his last words on earth because he had already died and resurrected. And so he was going to go back to heaven. And he's like, all right, you know, like now i got to tell you this before I go to heaven. So he tells them, and it's a command, you know. It's like something we have to do. So yeah. it's awesome. Um, and I want to go to another scripture. It's in Acts. Uh, what's the name of this Bible study? This uh, is a discipleship study. Alright, the discipleship study. Yeah. Um, and we just read, um... Okay. She's writing notes for you, so... I like my own notes, too. Oh, okay. Matthew 28, what? 18 till the end. Okay. Right next one. Okay. 
Yes, let's go to Acts 9, uh, sorry, chapter 11, verse 19. And then once we get there, Sam, do you want to read it? Sure. Sorry, verse 19. Okay, Acts chapter 11, verse 19. Yeah, Sam, you want to get that? Oh, sure. Are there? Okay. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, um, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling them the message only to the Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to the Greeks also, telling them the good news about Jesus, about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and great numbers of people believed and turned to the Lord. The news of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When they arrived, they saw evidence of God's grace. He was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For, so for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught in great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Yep, thanks. So I love the book of Acts. It just tells how, wow, like God's kingdom, like the church first started, you know, all the things that the Holy Spirit provided for these people and like how the church started, which is amazing. Uh, but what did you get from what we read? Um, I got that someone was teaching to the Jews first, but only to them, but then other people came and preached it to everyone else, and I kind of zoned out at the end. Okay, so do you want to just reread 24 to 26? Okay. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and the faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tars Tarsus for the seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Yeah, so what did you get from that part of the scripture, since you got the other part? What did you get from that that you just read? Um, that he turned more people onto the Lord? Yeah, and it says here that in verse 26, uh, Barnabas and Saul were there for a whole year, you know, and they were all just teaching people, you know, and a lot of people became disciples there. But there in the church of Antioch, Antioch was just a city, and that's a church that they built on that city. And at that church in Antioch, the disciples <laughs> were first called Christians there. So that's where um, Christians... Christians, like, the name came out first. Like, it's funny because I've talked to a lot of people, and it's like, oh, well, Catholics, and then Christian derived from that. I was like, well, yeah, well, in the Bible here it says, you know, Christians actually came out in the book of Acts, which is when the churches were being built, you know, the first century church, which is amazing. So um, when I first got this, I was just like, wow, it's like a revelation to me or something, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so they're called disciples, and then the name Christian came out. It was like a nickname for them. Mm -hmm. But the way that it happened actually was more derogatory. It wasn't like, yeah. wow, Christians are amazing. Let's give them mm -hmm. this name because they're like Christ. No, it was more like, man, look at those Christians. They're just trying mm -hmm. to be like Christ. Like, they just mm -hmm. really want to be like him, you know, but he's gone. And, you know, it was more derogatory. Um, but it's funny because they just adopted that name. It was like, you know, even though they called it to us in this way, like, we're going to take on the name, you know. So when they did follow Jesus. So, so it became a term of endearment. Well, they, it's not that. When they were given that term, it wasn't endearment. It was, like, derogatory. But the way they adopted it was like, it's okay if it's going to be derogatory. Like, we're going to take it and we're going to run with it. And next thing you know, like, now what's the word that you hear more in this world is like Christian like you never hear the word disciple like a lot of people if you go up to them and ask them like are you a Christian or Catholic or something? they're like yeah I'm Christian but they'll never use the word disciple because they don't really know they don't really know that it's used more in the Bible it's in there over like 200 under sorry 200 or more times in the Bible and Christians mm -hmm. it's only seen in the Bible like two or three times three times, three times. so um it's super cool that we're actually doing this study, so this discipleship study, so we're learning about discipleship and what the scriptures say about it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when it was given, it when it was given to them, it wasn't, um, it wasn't like endearment. It was derogatory. Yeah, but I mean, like they took it themselves and made it something. Yeah, they changed it for them. They weren't like, man, I don't want to be known as that. Like that's awful. Da -da -da. Nah, they just took it and ran with it, which is amazing. You should totally like adopt the way they thought. Um, but according to that, so now is there a difference between disciple and Christian? Are you asking me? Yes. No. No, there isn't. Um, and it's super cool because it's super cool to learn that just because 
like I said, in this world, in our society, like, no one cares, like, disciple, like, I don't care, but it's Christian, that's what I want to be known as, you know what I mean? But in the Bible, like I said, it's used over 200 times. So, um, according to the scripture back in, uh, verse, sorry, in chapter 28 of Matthew, it says that to make disciples, baptize them, teach them to obey, and things like that. So, um, according to the scripture, are disciples saved? According to the scripture? Yeah, Matthew 28. Um, yes. Yeah. And Christian, you said Christian was the same thing as disciple, right? Mm -hmm. So is a Christian saved as well? Yes. All right, cool. So Anais is just going to write a little um, formula, you can say, on your notes. It's probably already there. And it just says, like, Christian equals disciple equals saved. It's all the same thing. It's all saved. It's all the same thing. So just to refresh your memory and the scriptures are there to back it up. So now let's go over to Mark 1. Is there any comments, ladies? I don't know, but what about those that say that Christ only had those twelve disciples that there were no more? So that there were something. No more disciples? Oh, yeah, because like I talked to my other church and they were like, oh, Jesus just had twelve disciples and that was mm -hmm. it. Really? Well, actually, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. We really, um, I want to stick to this topic, but even in the in Acts that we just read, we can just go back to that same scripture. It said that Saul and Barnabas were at that church. So after Jesus left, after Jesus disciples his twelve, they made disciples. You can read it in John and all that stuff. Even after all that, in the book of Acts, they planted the first century church, the church from God, that you know, the first Christian churches, and they were making disciples there, like we just read in Acts. You can go back. Acts 17. It's a really good question, though. Because if you don't read your Bible, like, you can't see all the miracles that God did, all the disciples that they made together. Um, Acts 11, 19, like, it just talks about how um, they had, there was a lot of disciples, and they had been scattered by persecution. Um, Stephen was killed, you know, he was also a disciple, but he wasn't one of the 12 apostles. Um, so news of this reached the church in Jerusalem, this is verse 22, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged and allowed them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. So even though, like, Jesus was gone, like, all, people were still being, being brought to the scripture, like, the gospel was still being spread, like, and also, even not even including the Acts, which the churches of God was built um, in that book, just reading all the stuff that Paul wrote, like, all the times that they were making disciples and all of that, like, I would encourage you to get deep in that and see, like, mm -hmm. what Paul was saying, because Paul was a disciple as well, and um, originally not part of, like, the 12 when Jesus yeah. was first on earth. His ministry only lasted two years, Jesus. Because um, then he went up to heaven. Like, then Paul became a disciple. Then Paul, actually Paul, before he became a disciple, was persecuting Christians. He was killing Christians. So, obviously, there was more than 12 to, for him to be killing, but you should read his, his story. Um, but after that, he was making disciples. Even people, like, that he went to were scared because I was like, they're like, you were killing Christians. Like, what are you talking mm -hmm. about, you know? But then he just kept making disciples, and then... He wrote most of the New Testament. Well, not most, like a lot of it. A lot of the books of the New Testament. You should get in that and see, like, it talks about how he made disciples, how they were persecuted, mm -hmm. he was shipwrecked. He went through a lot in his yeah. life. So, yeah. But actually, we can go back to this topic yeah. um, on another time. I know I get really sidetracked and, like, start adding all these scriptures. Mm -hmm. But um, we can just focus on discipleship for now, and then we can read more scriptures to back that up as well. Okay. Good question, though. Let's go to Mark 1, 14. Okay, Mark one fourteen. Sorry, yes. Eighteen. Fourteen. Right. Fourteen. Okay. Um. After John was put in prison, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the city of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother, Andrew, casting the net into the lake, for they were fish fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Yeah, I love it. Where's he get from this? What I got was Jesus was going around, spreading the good word. He found some people and was like, hey, see what you're doing there. You can do something better. And catch men, so it's fish. They're like, all right, let's go. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Yeah, it says Jesus, the little subtitle at the top. 
says Jesus calls his first disciples. This is the first calling on the disciples, which is super amazing because you see that, like, what the kind of people that Jesus chose, like, he, they were fishermen. You know, they were fishing. And it's not people, like, that were in the lecture halls. It's not people that were perfect. Those people that spent their life, literally, in the water catching fish. Dirty, smelly, but they didn't care. That's how they made a living. That's, like, their life, you know. Their life wasn't like, oh, let's be powerful. Let's do this. Let's do that. Nope. They were fishermen, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's super awesome because it encourages me. Because, like, when I, you know, when I started studying the Bible, I was nobody. You know, I'm still, like, nobody. But God still chooses people like that, you know. Um, and it says here, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you to fish out for people. My scripture says a little bit differently. But yeah, like, to go get people instead of fish, because he was giving them, like, a new purpose in life. Like, their life consisted of, like, okay, let's be in a smelly place with fishes, and let's fish, and, like, let's make a living and support our families. But God's like, no, there's, like, a important purpose that I'm calling you to do. And, but as you can see, like, they just left everything they were doing, and they, they went straight to Jesus you know so like it's, it's crazy because if we want to follow jesus that's exactly what we got to do we got to mm -hmm. just leave like they did and just go follow jesus whatever god says whatever the scripture says you know and not what people say you know not like oh well this isn't this well if they don't have scriptures to back it up you know then what's the point of that you know it's not jesus talking um but yeah so is there any last comments on the scripture before i move on mm -hmm. no cool on any good. Alrighty, so now let's go to the next one, and it's going to be in the book of Luke. Let's do Luke. Sixteen. Nine. Nine. Luke nine? Mm-hmm. Yeah, three. You're right. <laughs> and it is my turn. Is everybody there? Luke 9, mm -hmm. starting at verse 23. Oh, mm -hmm. 9, not 14. Sorry. So it says... 9, verse what? 23. Okay. Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to be, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What is it? What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the Holy Spirit of the Holy Angels. Nice. So what do you get from here? This is kind of like wow. <laughs> um I think we must have reread this one. Sure. Okay, it was twenty three through twenty seven, right? Twenty six. Twenty six. Mm -hmm. Alright then. And he said to them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up, up, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is the man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. And he shall come in his own glory and in the fathers and of the holy angels. Mm -hmm. I don't understand verse 25, though. Um, yeah. So it says, uh, what good is it for one to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? So um, that's just saying, like, what good is it to have, like, your life, like, things in your life, like, such as, like, cars or houses, or I think it's different for different people, like, what is it to have the whole world, yet lose your own self, like, when you die, you're, who cares, like, you're not taking any of that with you, you're gonna go to hell, like, if you don't follow God, like, what is, what good is it to be a millionaire, what good is it to do all these things that you want to accomplish in life, when you don't even have God, you know, so, yeah, any other questions on that? Mm, no, I'm good. Okay, so what did you get overall? Um, basically, leave yourself and follow Jesus. Yeah, and the scripture is exactly what the scripture calls us out to do. It says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily. What do you think it means to deny yourself? Deny yourself, deny the um, temptation of the flesh. Yeah, and it, it can be actually a lot of things. Like, I used to think, okay, deny yourself, okay, don't smoke, don't do drugs, don't sin or whatever. But it also can... It comes down to as well, like, we're all girls. Like, we know how we can get, we get, can get moody, we can get emotional, we can start doing whatever we want to do and give people attitude and be just 
like jerks to people, you know, but we have to deny ourselves mm-hmm. and and really consider right. Jesus's um example. Like if Jesus was here right now, would we be acting the same way or would we be acting different, you know? Mm-hmm. We have to deny ourselves from the way we're acting, the way we can give attitude, the way we can present ourselves to others, our moods, our emotions, what we feel, what we think is best. Deny ourselves and just follow God. Follow what the scriptures say. You know, the scriptures don't says that it's a sin to be treacherous. So we can't be all moody and like, you know, like us girls can get sometimes. Like, we can't. We have to deny ourselves, you know. Um, and what do you think it means to take up their cross daily and follow me? Pick up their Bible daily? N- no, not exactly. Well, it says pick up your cross daily. And when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, like, he had to take his own cross. Like, he had to be tortured, take his own cross, and, like, die on the cross. Like, And for us, I mean, like, we have to pick up our cross daily. Like, we have to be able to take whatever comes with the Bible, whatever comes with following Jesus. Like, even if it means, like, um, torturing, like, persecution, like, whatever it is that we have to bear, like, that cross. We have to take up that cross for Christ. Like, we have to deal with it. Um, just because we're being persecuted, like, I don't believe what you believe, da, 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 doesn't mean, like, okay, fine, then I'm leaving, I don't care, like, I'm not going to go to this church, da, 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 da. No, we have to pick up our cross daily and just follow Jesus, whatever the scriptures say, not what people say. And then it says, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses, okay, we'll save it. We talked about that, right? So, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. So, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. So, Like, before the Bible and all that, for me, like, my life was crazy. I would drink. I would party. I'd do all this kind of sins. I had a boyfriend and everything. And part of me didn't even want to leave it, you know. But this is a scripture that really got to me. Like, it says, if I don't, like, if I want to save that part of my life, the sinful part that gets me into trouble, that gets me, like, almost killed. Like, if I want to do that, like, I'm going to not save my life. Like, no matter what it comes down to, no matter what everyone says, if I go to, uh, when if I die, I'm going to go to hell because I don't want to follow Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, and it's hard because, you know, sin can be fun. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm going to say that sin can be fun when you go out partying, when you're drinking, but it can also get us killed. It can, God controls everything. Like, if he wants us to learn a lesson, he'll make it happen, you know? Um, and the truth is, like, what's the point? Like, the scripture saying, like, what's the point? Like, when we die, are we going to have that? No. Like, and something that a lot of people don't see is, like, all the fun that you could have when you're living with Jesus, yet yeah. it doesn't get your life in danger in that way. Like, you won't drink and almost get killed, like, almost, you know, kill yourself, you know? Um, and it's just amazing what God can get, like, rid of our hearts because, for me, like, he got that, he got rid of that in my heart. Like, I really wanted to save that part of my life. And God was like, he got, helped me to see things clearly. Like, that's not going to get me anywhere in life. And in the end, I'm going to go to hell for it because I don't want to change. You know, like, what's the point of it if you're going to end up losing your life? That's what that scripture means. And then it says, what good is it? So basically, 24 and 25 go together. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet lose your forfeit your very self? So it's the same thing. Like, what good is it to have that? Well, you're not even going to go, you know, you're not going to take it with you to heaven. You're, if you die, you're going to go to hell because you don't want to follow Jesus. Like, it's not what, it doesn't come down to what people say, what people think, people's opinions. It's what the scriptures say. Mm-hmm. And especially what Jesus says. These are red words, so Jesus is talking. Like, growing up, my parents were like, don't smoke, don't drink, don't have sex, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't really matter what they say. Yeah, they can be right too, but it matters what Jesus said. What they said didn't get to me. I didn't care. I still drank. I still did whatever I want to do. But what the scriptures said, that's what cut me. What Jesus said, that's what cut me. That's why I was like, ah, okay, I love you, God. And it just, it took, I had to really deny myself. But yeah, now, like, I am so glad I did it. My life is way happier, way safer, and but it's so much fun now. And I actually have a purpose in life now. Um, and yeah, so then it goes 26, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. So yeah, the truth is, we can want to go party, we can want to go stay with our boyfriends, whatever, but if we're ashamed of God, the truth is, when the time comes to be judged, he's going to be ashamed of us, and we're going to go to hell, and it's not worth it anyways. So I'm glad for my decision, but um, do you guys have anything you guys want to add on um, this? Yeah. I was going to say, I just love how it starts. Like, this was actually super helpful for me because I kind of grew up in, like, in a religious home, but I was never properly taught how to live out the scriptures. I was just kind of told, like, it's okay, you leave, you're, you're good, you know, kind of a thing. Um, you're not a terribly mean person. Um, but this scripture really shocked me, and I love even just how it starts because it says um, Jesus is talking to people, and he's not just talking to, like, a small group. Like, this is Jesus talking to a group of his followers, and he says, who, in verse 23, it says, whoever wants to be my disciple. So it's not just so-and-so or a few leaders or just 12 people. He's like, 
anyone who wants to be my yeah. disciple. And the word disciple just means follower. So he's like, or student. And so he's like, okay, anyone who wants to be my student or my follower, um, you have to do this. So it's like, there's no exception. It's not like I can, even myself, like, they're, like, even in different churches and whatnot, there's so many different standards people have. Like, okay, well, you just come on Sundays where you... At the end, everybody's okay, but Jesus only had one standard for his followers, and his standard was really high, um, which I think is really challenging for me, because when I read this, I was like, oh, dang, that's not my standard. Um, so, but it's really good, because I love that, because this is the standard. He says, he's like, whoever wants to di- live this way, you have to deny yourself, and you have to carry your cross. Like, the cross back then, Jesus hadn't died yet mm-hmm. when he said this, so the cross to them was just a symbol of death and torture. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't grace or it wasn't a pretty necklace. Like, it was just death and torture. That's how they saw the cross back then. So when he's telling them, you got to carry your cross, they're like, what the heck? <laughs> the cross is lame. We don't want to carry the cross. Um, but it's just because the show, like, he really expected them to die to themselves. He really expected them to just deny anything in themselves that wasn't righteous. Um, so, like, for me, I know I have to definitely, like, in the morning, like, I'm called to strengthen my relationship with God and read the scriptures in the morning and just build that relationship with him but I like sleeping so I have to deny myself that time and deny yeah. my desires and my wants and be like okay I'm just going to get up you know and that's just a simple bit like little example but there are other bigger things like some people have to like Michelle she had to break up with her boyfriend I'm sure in her heart she didn't want to do that you know but she had to deny her feelings and her past like opinions of what she thought was right to go and match what the scriptures said because the scriptures call it if you want to be a disciple you have to die to yourself and pick up a cross and live the spiritual life and so it may be different for everybody different people have to give up different things um maybe different relationships i constantly face issues with my family because they don't believe what the bible teaches and so i constantly have to just deny myself and be like okay i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing and go on you know um, but it's just really intense because I think a lot of people can water down Christianity, but you just see Jesus' heart. He's like, anyone who wants to follow me, period, you've got to die to yourself daily. And nowadays, I think a lot of people, and what I was taught, I was to preach the cheap grace. Like, Jesus died, it's okay, you're fine, you don't got to do nothing. He died, he took care of it all, but that's not true. It's like, Jesus didn't die cheap, so we can't preach cheap grace. And in the same way, this is just really intense because discipleship, it just shows me, like, if I want to be a disciple, I have to really live it out. I can't just be going willy-nilly doing what I want and then, okay, yeah, I'm here and there, I read my Bible, you know? I have to really be dying to myself daily and living for Jesus, not myself. Um, but that really challenged me when I read it because I was like, oh. <laughs> like, that really challenged me because I was like, I, I'm not doing that. Um, but it was great because the study just helped me see how to put that into practice practically, like how you become a disciple. And that's what I love about the study. It just shows you what does Jesus' follower look like? What should I be doing if I am a disciple? Yeah, it's interesting how you bring up the chief gospel because I take it that um, you mean, you know, like how people say, um, once you proclaim that Jesus is Lord and you're fine, the blood has got you, no matter what you do, you yeah. are a OK gold. Yeah, because that's the doctrine that my church teaches, Baptist, once saved, always saved. Mm-hmm. And there, there was a scripture, I'm pretty sure it was like in Romans, I think it was Romans 8, I, I didn't memorize it. But someone wants, I want to say it was like Romans 8, 32, I didn't write it down. But it was something along the lines of nothing, um, nothing nor, I would have to look it up. Nothing nor can separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing right. what? Nothing no, can separate us from love, from Jesus' love, right? I think love something that. like that. Like yeah. it was like a longer. Yeah, it's like longer yeah, the guy I'm convinced that heights nor death, nor angels, angels, demons, nor yeah. death, nor mentality. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. About. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Maybe, maybe yeah. can explain. I know what. Yeah, I know what she's talking what, about. Yeah, because I was telling my church about your doctrine, how you're very much into repentance. Mm-hmm. And if you don't repent, even if you have proclaimed the Lord is God, mm-hmm. you will still go to hell. And so mm-hmm. she gave me that verse. Mm-hmm. And she was also, she also wanted me to ask you guys what you felt about forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and so that that verse was the one that she brought up. And you guys, you guys know what it is. I never heard it before. Yeah. Yeah. It's a beautiful verse. It's like one of my favorite yeah. scriptures. Mm-hmm. And about the forgiveness thing, there's a study on it. We can all 
Yeah. We will yeah. study about everything. We'll have you, all your questions answered. Yeah. yeah. We can answer that Roman's almost glossed her afterwards. We'll let her finish what she's saying. Yeah. That will be because yeah. this takes a while ever. And after that, we'll go through. I know exactly what you're talking about. This is one of my favorite Yeah, and then if you have time, you guys can go over scriptures, and then we can give you more scriptures and show yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We should just so. go topic by topic, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, like, sidetracked. It's very easy to just jump. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's a huge Bible, you know. There's so many questions in here, you know. Yeah, exactly. So. But And I'm like that, too. I get all sidetracked. Yeah. Uh, but we're done with the scripture. Any last comments on this scripture that's awesome <laughs> on this one yeah. all right let's go really quick i want to give you a great example of denying yourself even jesus had to do it he's a super great example on everything mm-hmm. so i want to go to matthew 26 39 okay matthew 26 30. 30. 30. no it's cry every time it's like so awesome sorry okay you want me to read 39 to... Yes, I'll read it. 36 to 39. 36 to 39. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, and it says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, it's verse 36. 26 39. I think you're in 20... Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm in 26 39. Oh no, thirty-six. Oh, thirty-six. Oh, okay. Thirty-nine. Sorry. Sorry. First. Okay. Thirty-six. Chapter. Yeah, you're in the right place. So you start in thirty-nine and go. Sorry, 30, thirty-six, 36. and then go to thirty-nine. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it says, um, then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, "Sit here while I go over there and pray." He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face down to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Cool. And what do you get from here? I'm not sure. I think he's basically asking. I think he's sad because he knows he's about to be crucified. Mm-hmm. He's like, Lord, uh, please, I don't mm-hmm. want to, but it's your will that's important, mm-hmm. not mine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's just amazing. Such a great example. Like when there's certain things that we have to do, we have to deny ourselves, and or we ha- or we have to stop doing. You know, we can always. Well, we're always supposed to rely on God, and this is a great example of that. Mm-hmm. It was hard for him to deny himself. Mm-hmm. But he could, he has to be perfect. There's no sin in him, so he did it, you know. And the way he did it, he, he prayed, you know. And it says here, um, so he told them, he told his disciples, like, hey, sit here, and, and I'm going to go over there and pray. Um, but he was, you know, going through a lot. It says that my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Like, have you ever been sorrow, like, sorrowful, so sorrowful that you're, like, to the point of death? Like, I've never gone through that. And I know I've been... Before I, like, was ever caring about God or into the Bible, like, I was a deep depression. Like, I thought, like, what would happen if I die tomorrow? Like, I guess it's not that bad. But to the point of death is, like, wow, it's intense. I know it has to be way worse than what I felt, you know, as a little teenager. You know how we can get. <laughs> um, but then it says, um, he was upset. Like, he says, you know, you guys can't even keep watch. Like, the disciples kept falling asleep. So he went a little further and he prayed again, you know, he wanted to pray until he got his heart right. It says, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Like, he's like, if can I, if I can just give this duty away to someone else, someone else can just die, like, oh my gosh. But then, as soon as he could, like, he got his heart right. But he says, yet yeah, not as I will, but as you will. So it's not what I want, God, it's what you want. He totally denied himself and he's got his heart right and he's like, I'm ready for it. And that's a great example. That's what we have to do sometimes. Like, I, I don't want to deny myself. I want to sleep in or I want to keep, like, having this relationship, this horrible, really bad relationship that's unfair. Um, for some reason, I didn't see it back then. Yeah, I have to deny myself. I have to pray and be like, God, you know, I can do this. Like, I have to get rid of this to have a real life, a real purpose in life. So um, same thing as Jesus' example. So what do you get from here, though? Any comments on this? Oh, uh, it's just it's just making me think more about the whole repentance thing. Like how I said before, since you guys are like really, really heavy on repentance, like you have to do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it! And you know, it's kind of like that. And so, yeah, and it's like, cause when I go back to my other church, and like, we, we never preached this. We were like, um, God's love, mercy, the blood has saved you. Mm-hmm. And then here it's like, repent, 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 repent. And it's like, you guys have so many scriptures to back it up that's really kind of hard mm. to argue with. Mm. Yeah. And then, 
I don't know how my, the church is going to handle this, though, because they, only one person gave me scriptures, mm -hmm. and everyone else is kind of like, ah, run away, roar! Mm -hmm. And then it's kind of like, okay, you're telling me to run away, and I want to run away, but you're not telling me why I should run away, and mm -hmm. they're telling me all these reasons why I should stay. Mm -hmm. And you guys are about to lose me here to the other team. Yeah, it's funny you say that. My pastor was the exact same way because I was from North Carolina. And so I called him on the phone because I was, like, going crazy in my room. I was crying my eyeballs out. I was like, what do I do, God? I feel like everything I know is a lie. Mm -hmm. And so I called him, and I was like, like, dude, like, people are crazy. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, give me scriptures. And he was like, mm -hmm. um, you know, the thing is, God's love is just awesome. And I was yeah. writing scriptures, and he was kind of like, so you know, sad. it's okay that we're all divided, <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. And he just never gave me scriptures. And after that, I was like, thank you, give my answer. I hung up the phone, and I was just like, wow, like, you got to go with the scriptures yeah, going, not what I'm going to tell you. I think that we've all yeah. kind of been there at one yeah. point. Mm -hmm. We ask people, like, hey, yeah. dude, give me scriptures, and no one gives you scriptures. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the Bible speaks, and we don't need to. Right. That's yeah. kind of at the end of the day, you know. Yeah, I yeah. totally know how you feel. We all know how yeah. you feel. Yeah. yeah, you're totally right. At the end of the day, who cares about opinion? It's what the Bible says. Without us, if you were to read this, you would know because the Bible says it, not mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're just helping you to see the scriptures. But mm -hmm. um, I think it's it's super cool that you're open about that like yeah. hey like this is how i feel um and like she said i think we all been through that but have you um prayed to god about it have you just poured out your soul to god and be like god like what am i doing like god help me uh, no i plan on doing that to camera and then posting on youtube <laughs> <laughs> and then like tag everyone i know and be like what am i supposed to do I probably should put on it first. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I was in there first. The thing like, is, yeah, the Bible has all the answers. You know, I mean, you could ask people, but even now, we're not really giving. We're not giving you our opinions. Yeah. We're giving you the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Our opinions can even be contrary. Like when I first read it, I was like, ah, my opinion was like. I don't want to give up this guy. Like, I want to keep being horrible and a mean, bad person. But then I read the scripture. I was like, okay, I, got, you know, God's opinion, Jesus' opinion is way better than mine. You know, mm -hmm. and I followed it. So, yeah. Trust me, if I were to give you my opinions on certain scriptures, I would take you with me. Yeah, like, yeah. I'll be way and off. Then, I feel like I'll be way off. Uh, you don't want me to give you my opinion. <laughs> yeah. But I God would, is awesome. I would yeah. just think. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's like, I feel like with my last church, it's like, I came away and I, I like don't know any scriptures. Like the only yeah, scripture that, that the verse mm -hmm. and like the words at is like mm -hmm. the only one I actually have memorized for that is John three sixteen. All wow. the other ones like like I, I will know the verse, mm -hmm. I won't be able to quote exactly and I will not be able to tell you where it's at. Mm -hmm. But it's like I it's like all these things I've heard about and then like <laughs> if I like like vaguely mention a mm -hmm. verse to you guys, you guys like already know it and mm -hmm. you know it exactly mm -hmm. and you know where it's at and it's like at my last church it's like we we didn't like I don't know it's like I feel like we kind of mainly had our Bibles closed like we would open our Bible like okay we're teaching out of this sermon yeah. and open it and then like sermon 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 and then you got to like script 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 scripture and so it's kind of like uh, it, it's just very conflicting yeah it is and it's 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 sad but like that's so much of a re religious world um, yeah. is that they really don't call people to the standard of the Bible, which is really, really sad, actually. Yeah. And it's like, it's all about a relationship with God. And so, like, if people are preaching, okay, they're just preaching out of this, right? But they're not calling you to, okay, hey, are you guys in your Bibles daily? Are you guys checking me out? Like, remember Acts 17, where they checked out Paul, the Berean, mm -hmm. you know, to see if what he said was true. Like, do the preachers really want that? Because a lot of preachers can preach stuff, but if they're not calling into the standard of the Bible, then you got to really question, like, where, where's their relationship with God? You know what I mean? And because if they have a solid relationship with God, they're going to call the members to that standard as well. You see what I mean? Yeah. And so, like, it, it's like what we've been saying. Everyone has been like, why wasn't I told this? Why am I just finding out about this? But it's like, God sees your heart that you're seeking the truth and he yeah. wants you to find it. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's gonna be encouraging. Like God wants you to know the truth, you mm -hmm. know? And that's all that matters. Like when you seek him with all of your heart, you're gonna find him. You mm -hmm. know? And that's the encouraging thing. Mm -hmm. You know? And just be grateful like that. Now like you're finding out. Yeah. That way you can help all those other people that don't know the truth to see the truth. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But then it's like another thing, it's like all these different sects of Christianity, it's like they all say that they have the truth. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's like, and a lot of them, they'll have like pretty, well, 
I would like to think they have pretty convincing reasons as to why, if they have mm-hmm. so many followers. You know, like the Mormonism and um, Jehovah Witness and all that mm-hmm. stuff. She was laughing because my ex was Mormon. Oh. Yeah. But I know a lot. Well, it's not, well, amen. It's just not according to the Bible. The thing is, people can say that they have the truth, but if we can't go back to the Bible mm-hmm. and find the scriptures, then where is your truth at? The Bible right. says, you know, this is the ultimate truth. truth so right. well, how are you getting your stuff from other places? Like, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and also my boyfriend, um, just his dad was a bishop, so they knew a lot of secrets about the church or something like that. And there's a bunch of bad, crazy yeah. stuff that you have that they don't let you know until you like are in your 20s and you have to take special classes for it, which didn't make sense to me because you can find everything you need to know in the Bible. Yeah, so, and there's no Just secrets. Go, always go back to the Bible. Yep. Yeah, yeah. all I'll say always go back to the. Any questions you have, go to the Bible. Yeah. yeah. The rest of the study will explain it, so I think it's just, yeah, I think by the end of it, you'll know exactly what you have to do. It's okay, yeah. let's we'll finish it. Yeah, let's get this. We're such chicks, uh, we're just like, oh my gosh, let's just get off like that. <laughs> okay, so, 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 um, Matthew, we were in Matthew 9, right? Jesus denied himself, so we talked about that, we finished. Any last mm-hmm. comments on Matthew 9? No. Okay, let's go back to the book of Luke. Oh, I thought we were in Matthew 26. Oh, yeah, we were. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, so now we're going to Luke 26. 36 to 39. 39. That's yeah. what I'm getting mixed up. Um, yeah, so let's go to Luke 14 now. Oh, baby. Oh, and you guys know another one of my friends who's also from Fresno by the name of Cassie Smith. Do any of you guys know her? Because I, I looked at her pictures and she had like the t-shirt that you guys had. <gasps> and I saw her with um, oh, one of the... One of the I, know, I saw her with like people that I saw at the Devo. No, but I saw that guy and I saw that guy Where too. Where is she at? She lives in LA now. I didn't know she moved to LA, but she lives in LA now. And Cassie Smith, what what part Cassie? does she live? Where in LA? I don't know. I don't know. She looks quite like, She she looks like um she has dimples and she's also black. She, like she has like like really big dimples. And I would say she um has straight hair. And I would say it's maybe about her length. And she, she's really like kind of like puffy. Like oh. <laughs> God's just using yeah. whatever he can. Yeah, he's in a different region. Yeah, a different region. I wish I'm a Takata. She's at probably in the Maybe you can show yeah, she's she's probably probably Or if you yeah. tell us where she lives, because we'll see, like, people yeah. who live yeah. in that area who might know her. Yeah, because, like, I went to your, the, the church's website, and then I saw her. She was in the tub about to get baptized. I was like, hey, I know that girl. And then I went to her Facebook page. I saw you on their website. Ah. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I'm sure I know her. all. I'm sure we know her. We yeah, probably know her. Right now. She's probably just in a different region. Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. See, God's all like, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> That's so cute. Okay. All right. So Matthew 14. Luke 14. Luke 14. <laughs> I'm like at Luke, and I'm like, Matthew. Luke 14. Let's go to verses 3. 25. 25 to 33. Oh, because I'm on chapter 15. Okay, Luke 14. <laughs> 25 to 33. Yeah. 25 to 33. And that's your turn. Okay. I'm Matthew, Mark, Luke. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Mm-hmm. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sit is not down first and count the cost, whether you have sufficient and finish it, lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold is begin to mock him, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sit is not down first and consult it, but whether he be able with 10,000 or meet him that cometh against him with 20,000 or else while the other is yet a great way off he sendeth an ambassage and desire with um, conditions of peace so likewise whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath he cannot be my disciple yeah so it's a little long um, what did you get from here did you understand it um, I think it was basically once again saying you need to give up everything to be my disciple. Yeah, and um, we can even start in the beginning in verse 25, and it says, if anyone, so again, it says, if anyone, so basically saying, not just, okay, this is a group, a little group of people, you guys can become disciples. No, if anyone wants to be a disciple, which means there's more than 12, if anyone wants to do it, this is how you do it. It's available to everyone, but you have to do this. And it says, um, <coughs> 
if you guys don't come, you know, I'll just read exactly how this If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. So do you think it means, like, man, like, I hate my dad right now. Like, I have to hate him because I want to do this. Or what do you think it means? Well, that's what it sounded like. It sounds like you have to hate everyone. <laughs> no, that's mean. <laughs> Jesus always told us about love. But, um... <laughs> No, the, what he actually means is you got to love God more than anything in your whole life. Like, mm -hmm. you have to love your family, too, though. you got to love them, too. But you have to love God even more, putting God first before anything. Mm -hmm. And it has to be such a difference that it's, like, hate or something. But even mm -hmm. though it's not, like, you have, you still have to love him. You get me? You just have to love God more. And it doesn't mean, like, okay, guys, you know what? i got to love God more. I'm going to love my family just a little bit less. Mm -hmm. No, you love him the same. Just love him as much as you can. But you got to love God even more than that, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> So, does that clear that up a little bit? You don't gotta hate them. <laughs> in the Greek, too, actually hate means to love less mm -hmm. in, in the Greek version mm -hmm. of this in the scripture. So, it's literally saying you gotta love everybody less than you love them. Well, that was Cool. Alright, so then it says, and who doesn't, sorry, and whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. So, it's just reiterating everything that Jesus has been talking about in his whole ministry. You know, like, you have to, like, follow God. You have to carry that cross, like, whatever that means, like, like torture, like, just denying yourself, you know. And then in verse 28, it says, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Like, what do you think that means? You have to, if you have to build a tower, you have to consider it, it like, how, how, what's going to take, what's going to cost you for, for you to actually complete it. What do you think that means? Um, I think it's saying, like, if you want to become a disciple of Christ, you have to first figure out mm -hmm. how to do it, and you have to get your foundation together, because if you don't have a solid foundation, then mm -hmm. you can't continue, or else yeah, you're going exactly. to crumble and fall. Yeah. Exactly, and everyone will ridicule you, the scripture says. So, exactly, like, when you're studying the Bible, you have to build that foundation, and there's going to be a lot of people, just like Jesus, everyone persecuted him, um, but people are going to be coming at you, don't do this, don't do that, or this is my opinion, this is da 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 You have to build a firm foundation, and first of all, you got to consider, like, what's it going to cost? So, if, mm -hmm. it, if that means, like, for me, the cost for me was... I have to stop sinning. I have to get out of a relationship that's bringing me down. It's like emotional torture. Like, that's keeping me away from God. Like, I really have to get out of that. And that was, for me, I had to count that cost. And it was totally worth it for me, you know. At first, I thought I loved this guy. But then when I left him, I realized, wow, this guy is so mean, you know. <laughs> um, and totally it allowed me to follow God. And so you have to see for you what is it going to cost. And for you, what do you think? Like, if you want to yeah. be a disciple and you have to count the cost, what do you think it's going to be for you? To be honest, I think it's going to cost me my happiness. Even though I know how you're like, oh, it will gain you happiness, but it's like, I'm pretty darn happy with my life. Because, like, how it was before, like, I already had, like, peace within me. Because I was like, Jesus loves me, Jesus has me, I'm saved. But now it's like, I'm over here and it's like, you got to do X, Y, Z, and then you'll be saved. And mm -hmm. then it's like, now I've, like, lost my peace. And I'm, mm -hmm. like, in turmoil and, like, having nightmares and can't sleep and stuff. Yeah. And so, it's all like, because, like, my life, my life is going great. It's like, having fun, met awesome people in LA, would go, like, eat, have fun, laugh, and it's like, life was good. And then I come yeah. here, and, like, I'm, I, it's like, I'm being asked to do a very radical shift that before, like, even though it's like, these things have been, like, preached <laughs> before in, like, church, but it's kind of like, you just passively go along. It's like, oh, we're already saved, so it's doesn't really apply to us type mm. thing. It's like, yeah, like, keep that guideline, but you're already saved, so it's like, then don't feel bad if you don't get a 100%. And you guys mm. are like, you need to go 100%, go big or go home. Or more like, go big or go to hell. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I, I was already really happy with what I was doing. Yeah. And now I was like, I'm going to go kill myself. No. So oh, God will never want that. Want that. Yeah. And you got, you just gotta remember the scriptures, like in Acts eleven that talks about the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So you have to be a disciple in order to have that term. So have you ever considered yourself a disciple? Uh no, disciple has always been like one of those yeah, terms extreme person. Mm -hmm. that you don't call people it'd be like calling them a prophet. It's like right. yeah. you don't call them a disciple. Right. And even even in Jesus' ministry, he had other disciples. He didn't only have the twelve. He had even he sent out seventy two of his disciples to go preach the gospel. If you read the scriptures, 
And so it's like, it's all about like, okay, it's it's not going to be easy. God says we we have to be willing to give up everything. That means everything we've learned uh, from now, how old are you? I'm 20. 20, from, from 0 to 20. Like every tradition, every emotion, everything that we've been fed and make it obedient to them. And that's what matters. Like, we, for me, like, I could think like I had a, a happy life with my boyfriend and all of that, traveling, I was in school and all of that. But really, like, you got you to gotta dig deep and see, okay, where does true happiness come from? You know, like, what, what was your purpose in life? Like, God gave us a, God gave the disciples a new purpose, like we read, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, stop doing the fish, now you fish from it. So has that been your lifestyle? Um, are you, have you been fishing for men? No. No. Okay, and that's God's purpose for all his disciples. And so it's radical, but it's awesome. You know, and you can't see it like as this thing that is like, whoa, like, you know, this is crazy. This is a new teaching. It's God's teaching. It's not ours. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's totally from God. And so those are the things that you have to count the cost. That's why it says count the cost. Like, what is it going to cost me to be a disciple? You know? And it, 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 I can tell you, like, for me in my life, I've never felt empty. I used to feel so empty. Like, yeah. what is my life about? What am I here for? You know, very empty, you know? And after being a disciple, I'm like, wow, I've never felt that emptiness again in my heart, you know? Like, all the things that we do that I did before, I can do it for temporary happiness. But it wasn't lasting, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's where you got to think about and say, okay, like, is this really, really true happiness? Like, where I was. you got to search and ask God for those things. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say also, like, I can totally relate to you. I remember I did this study, and I went away so bitter. Oh, my gosh, I was so upset. Like, the study I did after this, I just sat on my bed across the room from the girl. And I'm like, yeah, like, I hate you people so much. I was so upset. Yeah. Um, it was really, really funny, but I felt a lot like you did. I felt like, why are you preaching this, like, mean Jesus to me? Like, you know, I just didn't get it. Because um, it went so against what I, ta what I was taught. And, again, as I said, like, I grew up kind of like a Pharisee. Like, I had a really hard heart. I wasn't loving the people. I wasn't living to help other people. Even in my own family, if somebody got sick, I'd be like, eh. You know, like, I just had, like, the hardest heart. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't doing all these things. I wasn't partying. I wasn't clubbing. So I consider myself a really good person. And like you, I didn't very much see that I missed, was missing anything. Mm -hmm. When I really thought about it, I was really empty, like um, Tina said. And I would cry in my room when I went to university. Um, God sent me to another state away from my family so I could see that aside from my family's faith, I didn't really have anything. Um... It was really good for me, but it does seem painful at first, and that's normal, um, because you're basically being pulled out of the darkness and shown that you're in the darkness. Who likes to be in the darkness? Nobody. So it's um, so it is painful to be like, oh, what do you mean? I thought I was okay. Now I'm not okay. Now mm -hmm. that is painful. So it's good that you feel that. Mm -hmm. It shows that you're starting to understand, mm -hmm. and like you're being like the blindfold being taken off. Mm -hmm. So it's good. That's yeah. what God wants, you know. Um, but I just want to encourage you that it doesn't make sense now, but the life of a disciple is so much more fulfilling and it's so much more beautiful than anything you could experience as a non-disciple. Mm -hmm. Even if you grew up knowing about God, if you're not a disciple, your faith will not fulfill you and it will not keep you happy if you're not living it out as a disciple. So it is painful now and that's normal. That happens to everybody. But as you work through that and you go after being a disciple, you will see that in the end, it'll be so much more rewarding, and it'll actually be better than it was before. You'll be happier than you are now, and your life will be better, if it makes any sense. But you kind of just got to go on faith, just take a leap of faith, mm -hmm. and be like, okay, you say so, let me follow the scriptures, mm -hmm. and you'll see. <coughs> okay. Cool. And also just being a brilliant, back to what we've been saying, it's like following the scriptures. So you're recording this. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah. I'm taking notes for you. Reread the scriptures. And when people, when you go ask people like, well, they're saying this, isn't that, and they don't have scriptures, well, it's up to you then. You know, it's not with people's opinions. It's up to the scriptures. So you can even go on like, um, or BibleGateway.com. Mm -hmm. Just Bible type Gateway. in disciple and see how many times that pops up. up. Learn about disciples. Learn about all the disciples Jesus had. Because, yeah, he had 12 
uh, disciples that he discipled, but through those 12, he made other disciples. It's all over John, Acts, everything. So mm-hmm. you can even look it up yourself. And I think you're going to be really happy to see that Jesus did have a lot of disciples and how the churches were built in Acts and everything. So. Okay. Cool. And I just hope the voices and everything come out all right because... I don't know. know. We may sound like cartoon characters. I right, right, right. <laughs> get you yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, let's go to Luke 11 now, and I really oh, love this one. Um, we go the Did, king. Did, we, Did we not? No, we no, didn't. Ah, oh, you got me distracted. That's why. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's cool. Me too. All right, so then we did that. So we're on 31. Or suppose a king is about to go to another king go to war with another king. Oh, wait, where is this first? Um, 31. 14, 31. 31. 14, 31. Okay, uh-huh. it's the same thing we read, but we're just finishing it. I'm just reiterating. Or yeah, 31. Yeah. Yeah. All right, verse 31. So it says, Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciple. What do you think it means when it's talking about kings and going to war and like send a delegation of peace and stuff? What do you think that means? Uh, let's see. A war king going to send war against another king instead of not so Um. Okay. I don't know. Okay, so uh, it says here, so... There's a king with 10,000 and there's a king of 20,000 and they're going against each other, right? Who do you think those two kings are talking about? Who, which one do you think is you? Or, or the person? Um, I don't know. Okay, I'll just let you know. Um, so you, you would be... Just, I, okay, I guess it's for you. So um, you'd be the person going against the king with 20,000. So you're the 10,000 and you're going against the guy with 20,000. Who do you think is the guy with 20,000? It's God. Okay. So, who will win? A guy with 10,000 or 20,000? 10,000? 20,000, because there's more people. There's double the size. Oh, yeah, so, okay. he'll totally <laughs> beat them up <laughs> and kill them. So, that king is God. Like, we can never beat God. Like, God is always going to win. And so, if we know we're going to lose, like, might as well, it says here, send a delegation while you still have time to send peace. So, the same way with us, like, if we know we're going to lose, like, God, like, if I don't, I'm not living with you, it's I'm not living a life with you, then I'm, I'm nothing. Like, then we gotta send that that delegation of peace. We gotta make peace with God, you know, before it's too, too late. And in this, da, 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 ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciple. So that's it. Like, you have to give up everything to be a disciple. But it's gonna be super amazing, and it's a really fun life. And um, and yeah, we know God's gonna win, and we have to make peace with Him now before it's too late. Um, but on that part of the scriptures, do you guys have any comments? Nice. Okay. Too much things. Awesome. Any comments on that? <clears throat> that we just read? Um, no, I'm, I'm good. It's just basically about being disciple and repenting. Which is just like everything that like my other church is saying. I know, they don't know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> you guys already have like six scriptures. And they didn't really have too many scriptures. There is a mm-hmm. ten more. Even you can look it up. Look them up. Sorry. Yeah. So. Ten more scriptures? No, there's a ton, a ton, ton of more. more. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought you said ten. Too. Really? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot more. There's a good ten to different. Yeah. I didn't know. Which <laughs> ten is more interesting? First one is located. But yeah, you can look it up yourself. You know, don't rely on people's opinions. Like I said, like it's yeah. about the scriptures. Um, so now let's go to Luke 11, um, and it's going to be verses one through four, and it's yeah. your turn. That's right. Go ahead. You know me. Yep. 11, 1 through 4. Yeah, there's a verse like this one. Oh, wait, Luke, Luke 11, 1 through 4. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Just as you taught John, uh, just, as you, just, as you, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Yeah, what do you get from here? Uh, that's the Lord's Prayer. I used to say that every night when I was a kid. Cool. And what do you get from this scripture? Oh, um, what do I get from the Lord's Prayer? Or? Yeah, just the scriptures 1 through 4 in general. 
Or any comments on it or anything? Just um, Jesus was teaching them how to pray. Yeah. So, basically, like, they were seeing, like, all his disciples, they're following him around. He's discipling these guys, training them up, showing them how to do everything. And so they saw, like, wow, this Jesus, like, he really relies on God. Like, he gets all his strength from God. Everything that he needs, he gets it from God, and he prays. Like, he has a relationship with God. And they're like, show us how to pray then. And so he did, and he's like, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. You know, you know the scripture. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Lead us not into temptation. Do you think um, that this prayer was just something that, that Jesus said, all right, guys, here's a prayer. Repeat it every single day, and you're, you, there you go. You're good to go. Well, that's all it was taught to me. Well, I'm so hi, sorry. hi, hi. I'm looking for Alicia. This is the Bible club, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're part of a Bible club, but we're just having a Bible study. Yeah, yeah there's there's different clubs on campus. Um, so I don't know who that is. I'm so sorry. It's okay. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Oh no, it's fine. Good. Uh, um. So hold up, my page is folded and. It's <sighs> so yeah, yeah, like basically. Oh, you just still scream at her. She can hear you. Go get her. Go get her. Okay. Okay. Come on, Sam. Okay. Do it. Alrighty. So then it says. <laughs> okay. So sorry. I'll just continue. <laughs> just um, the microphone knows what's going on. She's going to recruit someone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just the microphone knows. <laughs> okay. So um. So yeah, like he basically like. It's not something that you got to repeat to God every single day and then, all right, cool, you've got a relationship with God, you're good to go. Because if I want to be Tina's friend, like I met her recently because she came all the way from our church in Chicago. Like, if I want to be her friend and I go, hey, Tina, like, how was your day today? And she's like, yeah, like, I read my Bible today. I learned this, this, and that. How about yourself? And I'm just like, hey, Tina, how was your day today? She's like, I already told you, like, I read my Bible. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll tell you. I also went to the mall. I went to, you know, watch the movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, Tina, how was your day? She's just going to be like, what do you want from me? Like, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, there's no way to build a relationship with her because um, I'm not talking to her more than that. And she can't really tell me anything because I'm not accepting anything, you know? Mm-hmm. So basically, this is not meant like, all right, tell him this. You're good to go. You got a relationship with God with, without a response, you know, nothing. Like, mm-hmm. pretty much, she was giving them an outline. Like, all right, you know, he goes, Father, hallowed be your name. So it's like, you got to look up to God. He's like your dad. Like, he's like your best friend. You got to be super close mm-hmm. to him and receive everything from him. All your strength. Rely on him no matter what. Um, and hallowed be your name. You got to praise him. Worship him. He's amazing. Um, and it says, your kingdom come. Like, you got to pray over the kingdom. Like, the kingdom of God is amazing. It's so much in store for us. Like, we have to be praying over it. We have to have it on our mind. Uh, Matthew six thirty three. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember from seeking God. Like, we have to put that as number one. And then it says, give us each day our daily bread. Like, God knows your needs, but he still wants you to pray over it. So pray for all these things. It says, forgive us our sins. So I don't know if you asked about forgiveness. Here's another one. But you always have to ask for forgiveness. Like, because once you become a disciple, that doesn't mean you're perfect. That doesn't mean you're going to stop sinning. That doesn't mean you're the most best person in the world. Because we're all sinners. The Bible says that there's no one who's free from sin except Jesus. So you got to pray over that. Like, ask for forgiveness. It even tells us right here. Yeah, that's also another thing that heavily goes past. Um, what I previously learned, um, because, like, you guys know, like, the parable of the mustard seed, I mean, not the mustard seed, you can say mustard seed, the Good Samaritan, mm-hmm. where, like, the guy was down and, like, took him to the hotel, and he's like, yeah. here's his, um, fee for, it covers now, and if he needs more, I'll come back, and I'll, I'll give it to you. Mm-hmm. And, like, our church always preached that, um, that's, you know, a parable of God, God's forgiveness, saying, okay, I've covered this man's forgiveness, if he needs any more forgiveness, I got it. It's there, and so it it wasn't about like like forgiveness prayer, like oh Lord forgive me, Lord forgive me, Lord forgive me, because it's like the blood of Christ already forgave your sins, past, mm-hmm. present, and future. Mm-hmm. So like it's I don't want to say it's blasphemous, but it's almost kind of like on that side, because like repeatedly asking for forgiveness is like not believing that the power of Christ already mm-hmm. bathed you and forgave yeah. you. Yeah, and I think that uh, that's a good question, but. When Jesus died, and yeah, his blood forgives, but that's in store for someone who's a disciple, becomes baptized, and follows the scriptures. Like, you can't just say, all right, God, so you died on the cross. That means I don't have to hear the word of God. That means I don't have to go to church. That means I'm going to go have sex. I'm going to go do drugs. Da, 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 da. I'm good to go. Like, that doesn't really make sense, even if you mm-hmm. think about it. And also, that goes against the scriptures. Like, it means we're not going to be perfect, and we have to, it's not just one repentance, become baptized, and that's it. Like, 
continual repentance because no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you do. You have to be like, God, forgive me and help me to repent. That's it. I don't want to be part of this sin. I want to repent. In Hebrews 10, it says that if you deliberately keep sinning, that you're yeah. not saved, yeah. you know? It, you just have to follow the scriptures, though. You can't just go by opinion. Yeah. But good question. Yeah. And I was going to also say that is a very good question. Um, and I think for me, I know especially if you come from a really religious background and you haven't had any outrageous and like you're not a recovering alcoholic or a prostitute, anything like that, um, it's really crucial as disciples in order for us to stay faithful. Like you say, we have to focus on Jesus and his sacrifice because that's the only reason any of us can be saved is because of Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so part of this is like it's not like we need to ask for forgiveness because Jesus already mm -hmm. died for us. Mm -hmm. His blood already covers us as disciples, if we're disciples. And His blood continually washes us and we're continually forgiven. And God already knows what sin we've done. It's not like we yeah. have to tell Him and then say, can you please let it forgive me or let yeah. it go. You know, He already knows and He already has in mind to forgive us. The reason that it's so important to constantly pray through this is because we need to be reminded of our sin. Yeah. So that we can stay grateful before the cross and so that we can remember what Jesus did and stay humble. Because if you're not humble and grateful before the cross, you're not going to stay faithful. Because you're just going to think you're awesome and you're okay, you know. And then you're not going to fight to work hard on your character and repent. So that's why God's like, I need you to constantly remember, you know, not to put yourself down or not, mm -hmm. to, not to minimize the power of the cross or anything. That's certainly not what he wants us to do. But to help us remember who Jesus is and to stay grateful for his sacrifice. That's what that's really about. Um, in the parable of the Samaritan, I'm, I'm, I could be wrong, but I believe that was just Jesus calling them out of their lack of compassion and their hypocrisy. No, it was. If you read it in context, yeah. it's Jesus always kept discipling them through parables. Yeah. So they couldn't see it. You mm -hmm. know, but yeah, good question. But yeah, that like she said, question. like it's true. Like you won't stay faithful if you're not humble. You're not continually remembering, like, wow, I'm forgiven. Like, because if not, like, we're not going to want to keep continually repenting. We're going to be like, right. he died, I'm good to go, I'm going to keep sinning. But no, it's like, no, like, I'm forgiven. I have to, like, I can't take it for granted. I have to appreciate it and just be like, sorry, God, I know I messed up again, but let me continue, let me repent. But yeah, Jesus' blood is forgiven, and that's for someone who, if you become a disciple, that's it, you're forgiven, you know. But if you're not a disciple yet, you're just taking everything for granted, and he died, and because he died, you're using that excuse to go do a lot of sins. And I was right. totally like that as well. But mm -hmm. um, just, I would just say, like, follow the scriptures, and it's exactly what she said. You know, just staying humble and super grateful that God even gives us an opportunity for that, you know. But what do you think? How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I think I'm going to fight that. Uh, yeah, I, it, I, I don't think I'm ever going to give up the forgiveness of the blood and think that I have to ask for forgiveness myself. Because it's like nothing that I could do ever earn my salvation. I could ask yeah. God to forgive me a million times because I never mm -hmm. had the blood of Christ. It would it all be in vain. So the blood of Christ is all powerful. And it is all powerful. It's definitely all powerful. Right. Can I just ask, what do you mean when you say you're going to fight that? Like fight that you have to pray for forgiveness or fight that? Yeah, yeah, fight the whole pray for forgiveness thing. Because like how I said, it's kind of like a slap in the face. Like for you to like sit here and be like, Oh, or like for one to sit and be like, oh Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And it's kind of like, why do you keep saying sorry for? I already forgave you. Do you not believe that I already forgave you? Mm -hmm. Do you not believe right. in my sacrifice? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And so I get you. I think like what she was saying yeah, as that well. Makes was, sense. Yeah, it does. And I think what she was just saying as well is not just, not just like forgive, like forgive, 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 because that's not really the point of it. Because you're forgiven once you know you're out of the waters of baptism. Your sin is down the drain and everything. And God knows all the sin you've done and all that kind of thing but it got, like she said God just wants you to focus on that like so that you won't forget that yeah like you're saying God's blood is powerful and God died for you you know what I mean because if you do forget about it like she said you're not going to be grateful for it you're going to be like oh I'm good to go whatever you know what I mean okay but Hebrews 10 still says that if you sin deliberately like that's it like you're took it for granted like you're not following God's word you know what I mean alright okay so um and it says, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Because, yeah, like, we have to have that forgiveness for others because no one's perfect. And we are going to get sinned against. Like, people are, are not perfect. They're going to hurt us in many ways. But we have to be ready to forgive them because God forgave us, you know. God's blood covered our sins. We have to be able to forgive others. But sometimes that can be hard. And lead us not into temptation. Like, God can, God always pulls us through temptation when we need it. Like, um, he always gives us that free will. Like, we could fall into sin, but we can also rely on God and be like, God, help me to not give into this sin this time and things like that. But any last comments on the scripture? Um, I think it's great how it says at the beginning, it says, Father, hallowed be your name. 
because like back then like <laughs> um Jews and stuff were just kind of like to God, but to them, God was this big dude in the sky who was just like all powerful. Don't zap me in the face because of my sin, you know. And so when Jesus says, like when they say teach me, he says Father, you know. And so what he's saying is pretty much like it's revolutionary to them because they've always took, oh Lord, like you know, Almighty. But he's saying that like, this is like your dad. This is someone you can talk to all the time. Someone's going to be there for you, you know. And so it's very easy to read this thing all the time. Like I've heard this since I was four years old, you know. But I think about it from a thing of like not like Lord, but like Father, like help me, like you know. And so I just think it's really awesome that he gives us that chance to be that close to him, you know? Yeah. And I was also wondering why you guys um, equate blessing to happy. Like, you guys are saying, if you're blessed, that means to be happy. Is there a scripture behind that? Oh, that's what the meaning means in that. In that if scripture, you look it up in, the, it up in the, Greek, the Greek, it means happy. fervently happy. Because of the Bible wasn't written in English. Yeah. So it was written in Greek, Greek and Hebrew. Hebrew. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also heard that it was written in Latin as well. Latin. I don't know which Latin. was the first language. People say different things. Well, there's different languages because they're in different parts of the world. So the Greeks were different and Jews Hebrew. and stuff like that. So Jews are kind of like the original dudes. But they, yeah. So. So. But yeah, but I can look it up for you and I can show you afterwards. I'll look at the, 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 the meaning. meaning. Yep. Yeah. But that's just in that scripture. In different scriptures it means different things. But in that scripture it means the purple to happy. Mm -hmm. how, how would you say your prayer life is right now? Do you pray every day? Do you like? Oh no, I only pray for my food because I don't want to die of food poisoning. But other than that, I don't pray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's important to pray every day because that's how we show, you know, talk to God and request, you know, like you know, glorify Him and praying about His kingdom and then, you know, asking for forgiveness or whatever, you know. Um, and like a daily prayer life is really important. Uh, is one of the most important things of being a disciple. Mm -hmm. You know, is through their daily prayer life. You know, so how do you feel about praying every day? Oh, uh, I, I first I stopped praying because I was like, I'm not worthy of God's time. Mm -hmm. So and then after that, I kind of got over it. But then I still I didn't want to pray. And at first it would bother me because I prayed every night religiously, like. Every single night I prayed, and then I stopped. Mm -hmm. And at first it really bothered me, and now I don't think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, it is really important, like Tina was saying, because this is actually words from Jesus, and it's actually the first ever disciple, like the twelve disciples, like they wanted this, like they wanted to learn. It's amazing that we get to have it as well, like that we get to apply it to our lives, like we get to pray too, you know. And it's amazing because when we pray and we read the Bible, like God, that's how God speaks to us, like by reading the Bible as well. It really goes hand in hand. And and they wanted to know because this is where they got their strength from. Like, and I think people, especially like um, in our society today, it's like we just want to rely on ourselves and get everything done ourselves. But we really have to learn to rely on God. Um, but I think that's a good challenge then to give you if, if that's what you're struggling in, is just praying. Um, I want to challenge you to pray. Like, um, even if you can do it once a day, even if there's like little prayers throughout the day, like just talking to God, because you need to build that relationship with God. Because like the scripture we were looking at before, you got to build that foundation. Like if you don't have a relationship or talking to God, like you can't build it, you know. Um, but what do you think about that challenge? Just praying, like you know, a couple of prayers a day, maybe little minute prayers, or even just praying at night. Or what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I think that's something we need to start doing again. That's yeah. awesome. I think it's going to help you a lot. It's re it really builds your faith a lot. Yeah. 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 You, know, you can ask God. God awesome. really opened my eyes to the truth. Yeah. yeah. Like, really help me to really get convictions on your word. Uh, help me not to stray away from the truth. Help me to just follow your truth. You mm -hmm. know, just praying for those things. And God will definitely answer those things, you know? Uh, it shows your gratitude, too, because, like, when you pray over your food, that's awesome, but that's like, hey, God, please don't kill me, you know, but instead of being like, hey, God, how are you, too, you know, mm -hmm. we can't always just ask, sometimes we got to give, too, you know, mm -hmm. the two-way street. Yeah, I like the model, maybe you can write it down, Acts, um, a, a prayer, like, it's um, called adoration, mm. confession, uh, thanksgiving, and supplication, oh. so it's kind of like, okay, when you pray, like, you want to, okay, God, you're awesome, like, you adore praise God, you yeah. praise Him, you know what I mean? And then cease for confession, like, confessing, okay, God, wow, like, I had unbelief today, I didn't believe that I was going to do this, you know, like, or a faith like that, so whatever, whatever sins. And then Thanksgiving, it's kind of like, okay, thanking God for all the things that you're grateful for. I thank God for the things that you have, 
And then supplication is basically asking God for your needs. You know, like say, okay, God, you know, help me to get closer to you, you know, whatever. Anything that's going to be about God, but not about our own selfishness, you know. Like we can't. We can't pray to God about, oh, God, I need this and um, Mercedes Please or whatever. You know, Mercedes. Mercedes. <laughs> God, I know. you know what I mean? Like, we've got to make it about God and our relationship with God, you know? Now, how do you feel about that? Like, that's a good way to, you know, start your prayers if you need help, you know? Okay. I'm not going to lie. I, I was in my own world. I wasn't really listening. <laughs> okay. No. Hey, man, she wrote it down for you. You can go through it and see. Okay. So, any last comments on that scripture? Yeah. Alrighty, moving on. Go. Let's go to John 13, 34 and 35. And is it Tina's turn or Tina? Yeah. So, 34 and 35, and then let us know when you're there, Tina. Okay, it's John 13 what? 34. 34. John 13, 34 through 35. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, it says... A new command I give you is love one another as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Yeah. What do you get from here? What are your comments on this? Or what sticks out to you? Don't be a hater. Love one another. Yep. Uh, Yeah, I I actually really love this scripture because, um, you know, before the God, before the Bible, like, I didn't think that love was important, you know, I didn't think, oh, I can give this girl attitude if she deserves it, but no, this says you gotta love one another, um, and it says a new command I give you, why do you think it says a new command, I mean, I mean, if I was a Bible, we gotta love one another, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, basically, yeah, it'd be a sin if you hate your brother, which hate is already equivalent to murder, and mm-hmm. God does. Yeah, right. But in verse 34, it says, a new command I give you. Why do you think it says a new command? Because, you know, all over the Bible, it says you got to love one another. Like, we can't be haters, right? But why do you think it says a new command? Uh, I don't know I would say that. Okay, well, you know, um, it's actually really cool. Uh, it's a new command because um, at this time, like, Jesus had it died on the cross yet, but he was going to introduce a new kind of love. Um, and what kind of love did he show us? Like, how deep was his love for us? Jesus. Um, everlasting love? Yeah, love? yeah, like, he died on the cross because of all the love he had for the disciples, for us. Like, he was willing to, like, let himself be killed. Um, and that's difficult. Like, I don't know if I'd be able to do that, but that's why I wasn't chosen, chosen, you know. Um, but that's a new, different kind of love, like, that they hadn't even seen before. They're like, what are, you know, that she, he's going to die for us? Um, but yeah, and it says, a new command I love you, as I have loved you, you must love one another. As I have loved you. To the point of, like, I'll give up my life for you. I love you so much. Like, it says here that by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Like, it has to be so different that the <laughs> world will see it. That the mm-hmm. world will, can come into our church and be like, wow, these people actually love each other. Like, it's not one of those churches where there's, there's gossiping or there's, like, slanderous among them or they don't like each other. Or there's actually someone from there that doesn't like over there. No, it's not about that. Like, they have to love one another deeply. Like, you can't be a disciple without loving people at the church. Like... And, it ha- like I said, it has to be to the point where people, like, go in and they're like, wow, these people actually love each other, mm-hmm. you know? But what do you think about the scripture? I was just thinking how my, my last church, it was very gossipy. Mm-hmm. Everyone talked about each other. Like, this is one time I went up to the church because me and my mom were having problems. And I was like, church, please pray for us. And then, like, I'm pretty sure in, like, a matter of hours she had heard about it because, like, the next day she, like, jumped on my throat and, like, oh, why would you go up to church? Now they probably think I'm beating you and, like, because my mom, she's really about saving space. Like, she wants the church mm. to think that she's perfect. Yeah. Mm. And, have, and I was supposed to be like the whole, oh, look, my I have a perfect daughter in the church, too. Look at everything that she does. Mm. And, like, people didn't even really know my name. They knew me as Treva's daughter. Mm. So, like, mm. yeah, so when I did that, I'm pretty sure she was like, how dare you just shatter my face like that in front of the church? Oh. And so it's kind of like, yeah, she was like, you can pray just as good as anyone else can pray. Mm-hmm. And, like, she didn't ask me any questions. She didn't ask me, why do you think we have a problem? What can I, we need to fix this? It was, like, shame on you, shaming mm-hmm. our name. Mm-hmm. This is what that turned out to be. Uh, and I feel you. I think um, I think a lot of us have probably gone through that in many ways. And same here as well. Like, I would go to church. No one really knew me. No one. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a church, like, yeah. this, this describes here, like, love. Like, people yeah. have to 
go to church and like a lot of people know each other not just like oh i know one family i used to go to right. church like thousands of people and it's like we only knew like one other family but yeah. we knew them before they went to church so they kind of don't even count yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's like right? it doesn't really go to the scriptures that says we have to love one another because you can't you know you have to get to know someone and love them and have relationships with them but is there any comments you guys want to share about because i know she went through that uh-huh. yeah i was going to share i think um yeah thank you for sharing because that's really um it's really painful to go through. I think all of us probably have a story like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think when I read the scripture, I have like a love hate relationship with the scripture. Because when I did this study, I literally like was like trying to convince myself that I was okay. And then when I got to the scripture, I was like, okay, forget it. There's no way I'm gonna do this. Um, <laughs> this is just mm-hmm. not my strength. Um, and amen. God has like refined me over the years. So it's become one of my strengths, but it's not easy. But I think one of the things that really challenged me that I had to learn was that. Um, Sometimes love isn't what you think it is. Mm-hmm. Like, love isn't a warm, gooey feeling. Mm-hmm. Bubbles, in, like like butterflies in your stomach. That's infatuation. That's not love. Um, okay, love is like, sometimes love means making you cry. Sometimes if you really love someone, you're just going to have to lay them out. You're mm-hmm. like, you need to repent or you're yeah. going to die. Yeah. Sometimes love just means making someone cry. Yeah. Sometimes love is just, it doesn't come in the form you would think. Things like gossip. Things like not respecting people, like not respecting your privacy, um, you know, or like not, um, or if people are trying to teach you and you don't listen to them, or you disregard what they're saying, you know, or if um, if you ask me for help and I say like I'm gonna do it and I don't do it, like just not respecting you or not being honest with you, that's not love, you know, or like for example, like people pleasing is not love. If we were to sit here and tell you, yeah, you're fine, that's not love. Because we love you, because we want to put your salvation and your needs above us feeling comfortable and making friends with everybody, that's us loving you. We're not people pleasing, you know? We want to make sure that you're okay, you know? We would much rather walk around and tell everybody that they're fine, you know, but we can't do that. Um, We have to put um, their needs for salvation above our own desires to be comfortable and to have a bunch of friends and be popular. You know, and so sometimes love comes in that form, and that's the kind of love Jesus called us to have for each other. So if people in your life aren't willing to do that, they're not willing to help you through your problems and call you out when you're wrong, then they don't really love you because they're not going to help you grow and they're not going to help you overcome anything. Um, and it's hard because I've had people make me cry. I've had people be really mean to me, but when I look back, I'm so grateful because I wouldn't be faithful to this day as a disciple if they hadn't done that. Um, but just be prepared. <laughs> Sometimes you may, if, once you're a disciple, you may have to bring somebody to tears to get them to repent. Who knows? I don't know. But that's the kind of love Jesus expects from us. Not always. Obviously, sometimes you can just buy someone a cookie or whatever. But you know, <laughs> but just that's the kind of level of love we, he expects from us. So. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any mm-hmm. comments on that, or how are you feeling about the scripture? Uh. I don't know. I, I don't really feel anything about the scripture. Do you understand how it has to be about love, and it can be different though about how we see love? Like it might have to mean, like she said, like telling people straight up, like you know, you have to repent because they love them though. Is that? Do you see that? Yeah, no. I'd, I'd analyze the Bible thumb. I don't do that. You don't do what? I don't like Bible thumping like. I, I really don't like no, that. No, it's always done in love. You have to do it with wisdom. I would never do that to anybody. People, like, the people who yell in the streets like that, that, that freaks me out. That's not the yeah. weird. And it's not the not of love. It's kind of saying, I'm right and you're wrong. Yeah, no, that's, that's not, not love. Yeah, no, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. What we're talking about is we're all wrong because the Bible's right. That's what really it's like when you love someone, you can show them, hey, it's not like, hey, you're wrong. It's like, hey, the Bible said this. I'm asking you, like, you think that you're back with the Bible, so it's not what I said, you know? Okay. Okay, awesome. What do you think about that? Alright, bye-bye. Yeah, I, I don't really feel anything about the scripture. It, it doesn't cut me. It, I don't feel anything about it. So do you think you love, like, a disciple? Um, no, probably not. Is that something you want to start doing? No. Okay, is... Okay, let's go well, to the next scripture, though. <laughs> the scripture doesn't do anything for me. But is that something that you want to be a part of, like walking into a church and not worrying about, wow, people are gossiping, or wow, people don't think I'm perfect, or wow, I don't, you know? But um, being part of a church, like, I, wow, everyone just loves me here. Like, is that something that you want for yourself? 
where you can be real and you can be honest about your imperfections, about where you need help. Like, is that something that you want? Um, yeah, it'd be nice. It's not something I need, but it'd be okay. Okay, let's go to the next scripture. Okay. And we can talk more about that. Matthew 28, actually back where we were. And then you can just let me know when you're there. Matthew chapter 28? Mm-hmm. Where we were. Verse 18. And then let me know when you're there. Actually, you can read it for us. Okay, Matthew 28, verse what? 18 to 20. Okay, 18 through 20. Yeah, you read it before. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and, see, and teach all nations, by pledging them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Yeah, and so this is something that we already read. It was the first scripture we read. But now that we understand, he's talking about disciples here. Now we understand what a real disciple actually is. We understand what a, a, a disciple is composed of. Now we can get into the scripture deeper. Like now we really understand what the scripture is about. Mm-hmm. And it says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So it's like, wow, this guy, Jesus, he's giving a command and it's like from God. Like all this authority has been given to him. And now it's like, now I command you to do this. So it's actually something that we have to really keep, you know, close to our hearts and something that we always have to refresh in our minds about because it's something that it's like done with the utmost authority and it's by Jesus and it's it's not just an opinion it's a command so if we do want to become disciples it's like something we have to live by and so it says all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit so is that something that you've done like have you ever made a disciple before now that you know that what a disciple is have I ever turned anyone else into a disciple yes Mm. (laughs) I don't think I have Okay. Like, I've done, like, my own, like, Bible studies with other people, but I don't think I've turned anyone to a disciple. Okay. Yeah, it, like, it's it's funny, like, sometimes that was, was the same thing. I don't think so. Well, I've invited people to church and stuff, but if we don't know if we made a disciple, then we probably haven't because it's, it's a process. It says here that you have to make disciples of all nations. You have to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you have to teach them to obey everything that's commanded from Jesus, like from the Bible. Like you have to, not only when you make a disciple, have you're done, you're good to go. No, not only that, but you have to keep teaching them to obey. That means walking with them, helping them with their sin, like showing them how to repent from their sin continually, because um, that's what the Bible teaches. And once you do that, it says that Jesus is with you, right? So if you haven't made it into one into a disciple, you're not really sure, like, are you a disciple right now, as of right now, according to these scriptures, not anyone's opinion? Um, no, not according to the scripture, but I still have in my heart that I have salvation. That's going to be kind of hard to pluck for me. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so we said that a disciple equals Christian equals saved, right? Um, and we know that... To be called a, a Christian, you actually have to be called a disciple first because a Christian actually is, all a Christian means is disciple. That was just a nickname given to them. Like, this society changed it and watered it down and did whatever it wanted, and that's opinion, and it's up to you what you want to believe, but according to the scripture, are you saved? Without people's opinion, without your opinion, but according to Jesus' opinion, according to God, are you saved? Not with the scriptures that we went over, but with the other scriptures, you know, like the whole John 3.16, confess, believe, mm-hmm. and you're saved. Like, I'm, I'm going to always have those in my heart, mm-hmm. and I'm going to have that salvation I got when I was in sixth grade. Okay, well, um, so the scriptures, I'm sure you know in the Bible is perfect, it doesn't contradict itself, but the scriptures also say it doesn't contradict itself and that it's perfect. So um, I think those are scriptures that you have to really... Um, read deeply and read in context and we can talk about that later but yeah Yeah. so like the scriptures that you're talking about in Romans about confess and believe those are actually already people that are already saved Mm -hmm. gotta read in context so Paul was uh, addressing the um, the churches in Rome the churches in Corinthians the churches in whatever other scripture it is Mm -hmm. you know these are already saved disciples Okay, so the only place you're going to find Jesus' is teaching about salvation is in the Gospels and in Acts. Because Acts was like the first century church that was built. And so obviously you see all these people getting baptized for their, for, for their forgiveness of sins. Now, 
those other scriptures after that are actually disciples. Mm -hmm. So Paul was telling them those things. There, he wasn't telling them how to be saved. He was encouraging them, encouraging them to stay disciples, stay strong in the faith, do all these things. You make sure you're confessing, you know, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord of my life today. They're already saved disciples. So if you read it, if you actually look at the Bible, I have like a Faith in Action Bible that talks about the history and everything. You see Paul's letter, Paul was the author, Paul's letter to the Corinthians church, to the churches. These are already saved Christians. Yeah. It and doesn't it, give you a way mm -hmm. to sal salvation. And you can look at that even through um, her Faith in Action Bible, super awesome. But you can even look at it through the names of the um, of the books. Like that's why it's Romans, because it's talking to the Romans. It's talking mm -hmm. to the people in Rome, which mm -hmm. the church in Rome was there, right? It's mm -hmm. talking to the Corinthians, the people in in that. There's like Thessalonians, you know, and Timothy. He's talking to Timothy. That's he's writing these letters. So even if you like read in the beginning, it'll say Paul and Silas and Timothy, like comma, like that's who he's talking to, like. Um, you know, Paul, Timothy, like, it'll tell you, you know. But, yeah, so those are those scriptures. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I was just going to say, um, I think all the scriptures you have, I think it's great, though, because the scriptures you have are obviously biblical, you know, and they obviously do say things like, all you need to do is believe, or just, if you just confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you know, you're saved, and things like that. But, again, as Tina said, it's very important to study out scriptures in context. And another thing, there's the reason this the study we did just before this is the word and it talks about how we want to put the word above our feelings and above our old opinions mm -hmm. and above what we've been taught and that's why we do that one first because we know this is a hard study for everybody so it's really important just to understand like as um as michelle said the bible doesn't contradict itself you can't be saved according to one book and lost according to another how in the world would anyone get to heaven that way mm -hmm. um if god left us three different instruction books that wouldn't make any sense um, so I would really just encourage you to get all those scriptures. Because um, there are scriptures that people just repeat here and there. They're written on pillows. They're written on bracelets. But nobody knows where they're at, mm -hmm. who wrote them, who was it addressed to, mm -hmm. when did they write it, mm -hmm. why did they write it, what was the issue of the Christians that they were being written to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what was their response? Like, people don't know these things. They just spit out these scriptures that people have told them. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, where are these scriptures? Where are they? And so... Um, and so I'm sure any one of us here, if you just showed us the scriptures, will gladly go through them with you. I think she's talking about Romans 10. Yeah, like Romans 10. Because mm -hmm. um, there's a few, and there's a few in John, like all over the place. Um, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I just encourage you, like, go ahead and study them out yeah. on yourself and really ask yourself, where are they from? But know that at the end of the day, like, and we have notes for you as well, like, nothing we've shown you is unbiblical. Nothing we've shown you is things we've made up. We just looked at the scripture. What does the scripture say? Um, so I know it's hard, but I just really want to encourage you um, to really go by what scriptures say um, and not to go by what you've been taught in the past um, because this is a big issue because if you decide to follow a false doctrine, that means when you die, you won't go to heaven, um, which is really scary because I believe you have a heart to love and want to follow God, mm -hmm. and I, I, that's why he's allowed you to come and know the truth. Mm -hmm. um, so he's presenting you with the truth, and if you ignore it, what are you going to say on judgment day? To God, you know, that's a pretty scary thought, um, <coughs> so I just really <coughs> want to encourage you to really think about that, because this is it, this is it, what we say versus what the other people say, this is salvation, yeah, um, and so I just really want to encourage you to go over the scriptures, and I promise you, if you really study them in context, um, the scriptures don't lie, um, you need to do more than just believe, and mm -hmm. you need to be willing to live your life out for God. Um, and you do need to repent and just keep living the life of a disciple. So, yeah, but just go over the studies. Again, just to encourage you, the scriptures, regardless of what anybody says, you can always trust the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So just know that. The scriptures are solid. The scriptures aren't going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So just really just, um, and don't let people twist scriptures or confuse you. Don't let people water down the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That's super important. The scriptures say what they say. They're not to be watered down. Mm -hmm. um, it's really dangerous when people do that. But just go over the notes and just trust at the end of the day. It may be very confusing. It may be like, well, what about this? I'm going to hold on to this because it's easier. Mm -hmm. But just trust that the scriptures um, the scriptures say what they say. Um, and they're trustworthy. God's word is trustworthy. So just yeah. let that give you a sense of peace and stability, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So, yeah. What do you think? How are you feeling right now? 
don't know. I was, I was like, I was really on board until we got to the whole, like, asking you this for yourself rather than, like, testing the blood of Christ. And then after that, I was kind of like, you know, maybe my church was right. And then, like, for, like, the last 30, 40 minutes, I've kind of been, like, having that in my mind, like, okay, more conflict over here. Because, I mean, like, you guys, like, everything you have, it's, like, it is biblical. It is, like, there in black and white. But then I also have my other church saying, but look at these scriptures. That's also black and white. But then it's, like, I don't know. It's, like, you guys are, like, you have them coming, like, back after back after back. And, like, all these scriptures, like, they back up each other. Mm -hmm. And then, like, mm -hmm. they have these scriptures that, like, we've all heard before. They're, like, all, right. that we all live by. But then, like, I don't, like, you guys said, like, I don't know who wrote them or who they're written to. And right. There's, like, verses that said, um like um you come like you can only be saved through me like mm -hmm. and um and that's true. my blood and yeah. but i don't even i don't even know because it's, it's like i just know the gist of them like basically um the only way to come through the father is through me mm -hmm. and that um true. salvation is a gift something that cannot be done through work totally that's true yeah and then yeah but then it's like i don't know over here is like you guys are so like you have to you have to work for it because i mean it does make sense like because, um, like, I would think, like, oh, man, Christianity, this is such an easy religion. Why doesn't everyone just do it? All you have to do is right. believe. I think right, you're right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But why, then, why would God make it easy? Like, wait, like, let's say, because if he made it easy, then we'll just be all sinners and, like, sin it out. Like, we want to care about we're repentance. Go that. And, like, I, ask yourself this question. Like, how is repentance a work? How is stop, stopping sinning a work? Oh, yeah, I, I you know thought I mean? about that last night. Exactly. Like, how is it? How is it at work? Well, it doesn't make yeah. any sense. How because it's not like, work? <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of work. Hard. I you can know? explain that. But and even, then, like, you have to go back to the scriptures, James 2. Faith without deeds is dead. If you if you have faith in God, but then you're not doing anything about it, it's dead. It's, it's like, the, the demons believe that Jesus was God, you know, he, they believed in Jesus. And Even you know the devil, I mean? like, you can see it in the Bible, like, the devil tempted Jesus. Like, he right. believed it. Is he saved? No, he's in hell, you know? Yeah. So what's she saying? So we can believe, but if we don't, if we don't hold to his teaching, we're not really his disciples. Mm -hmm. And the truth is not going to set us free, and we're not going to come to the knowledge of the truth. You know what I mean? The truth won't set us free? What? If, if we don't hold to God's teaching, you know? And so it's all about holding to the teaching, holding to the standard of the Bible, obeying the Bible, and not letting all these things that you've heard deter you from becoming a true disciple. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? And so even like, even like in Romans, it says, To all in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be saints. These are addressed to the Roman church. These are already saved Christians, already disciples. Um. And so you can't be... You can't be a disciple without being a Christian. You can't be a Christian without being a disciple. And that's something you have to really... It's good to wrestle with God, but it's it's also good to, like, really make a decision on, like, where you're at. So but I thought we had already established that Christian disciple and saved are all equal, though. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but you just said you can be a Christian without being you a disciple. You can. You can't. You can't. That's you can't be a Christian without being a disciple. You can't yeah. be a Christian. Okay. And I think... I think right now it's really hard for you. I think you don't want to, like, really get in there. I think you've been going through a lot. But I think, like you said, according to what the scriptures we've read today, you're not saved, you know. And I understand it seems very easy to say, oh, it's okay. I think I'm saved, so it's okay. But it doesn't matter what you think, you know. And then even, like she said, like in James, whatever, it literally says, like, do you want evidence? Like, in James 2, right here, it says, you foolish man, do you want evidence that faith God is, is useless? Um, was not your, was not, our, Abra our ancestor Abraham could be righteous for what he did. And it goes on and on. It says, like, it literally says, like, you foolish men, like, can you really say that faith without deeds is, like, useless, you know? And then, like, it's everywhere. And then even, like, you're saying as far as Rome, I think we should show you that one because I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, <clears throat> it's very easy to say, like, oh, well, the Bible says this, but it also says other things, too. So, right here it says that if you confess the amount of Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, um, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But then in Acts 22, so it'll show you when do you call. You know, yeah. When do you call upon the name. So, okay, that's awesome. So that's what it says, right? But then in Acts 22, 16. It 
Jesus. And now what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on his name. So when you call on the name of the Lord, it's at baptism. It's not just like, oh, Jesus is awesome. People use the name of Jesus in vain right. every day in life. They say things like, oh, you know, I don't want to say it because it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You hear people all the time say that kind of stuff. So if that was the case, everybody on this campus would probably be saved, even if they were sleeping with their girlfriend right now, because they always say that word, you know. But it's like you call the name of Jesus at baptism. And then in Romans, that's when it counts at baptism. Yeah, at baptism. And then right, what can we say then? Should we go on saying that grace may um, increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we therefore live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, that order that just as Jesus raised us from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we may live a new life. So you see all these scriptures, I know that's exactly what like, you're talking about. <laughs> And then even in Revelations, it says, like, oh, if you knock on the door, whatever, it will be open to you. Back to the church um, in Revelation. Yeah. You see. A literal church? Yeah. Laodicea. How do you say it? Laodicea. 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 Where is it? 321. 321? 20. Yeah. What? 320. I'm always off by like a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, to those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and eat with him, and he with me. But it says to the church of Laodicea. So pretty, he says, I wish you weren't hot or cold. So what he's saying, he's like, I wish you were hot or cold, but not lukewarm. So these are people that have already accepted Jesus have already been baptized is what he's saying. Those people that have kind of started wandering away, he's like, I wish that you were either hot or cold. And he says, like, make up you, your mind. Yeah, and if you come back to me pretty much, I'm going to accept you because you've already been baptized. He's not saying, like, oh, hey, this random guy in the store is like, hey, do this, can I come inside? No, you have to do something. And it's not something about a work, but it's about, it says, like, do you want proof that faith that Jesus is dead? You know? Does that clear up your questions or not really? Uh, yeah, this is going to have to be a lot to go over. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and no oh, worries. Right. You should read the Bible, write everything down, yeah. pray about it, bring it, whatever, you know. But yeah. it's, it, like we've been saying, it goes down to not opinion, but what the scripture is saying, you know. And what she was talking about earlier about um, the truth won't set us free if we're not holding to this teaching. It's what you read in the last study, which is in John, the mm -hmm. scripture in John. Like, you have to hold to his teaching. You just can't read it and be like, okay, yeah, 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 okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm going to go do this. Like, you have to hold to his teaching. You know, you have to really listen to the scriptures and do what it says. Um, like in James, it says, don't just deceive yourself. you got to actually do what it says. Don't just yeah. think you're okay by reading it, you know. But how are you feeling now? Like, I know it's hard. We just showed you a bunch of scriptures. And the scriptures are what matter. So how do you feel? Uh, I feel like... It, it's still going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's okay. Amen. It's okay. As long as you persevere. Perseverance yeah. is what's going to help you a lot. Oh, I'm not talking like a fight to like get closer to, like fight between my old doctrine and your old doctrine. Because mm -hmm. right now I'm still holding on to my old doctrine. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it, 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 it's going to get ugly. Why are you still holding on to that? Like, do you believe it's true? Yeah, because like, this is what like I've had for the past two years of my life. And then like, can't like, it's like, it's very unsettling to, like, believe for, like, the past, like, 10 years. Yeah. And then someone's like, nope. It's like, like, being adopted and then your parents finally say, oh, sorry, you're not really ours. And it's like, um. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, then where are my real parents at? It's kind of like. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, like, want to, like, cling on. Like, no, you're my mom. You raised me. You're my mother. It's like, oh, okay, you can think that, but I didn't give birth to you. And yeah. so it's, it's like. And that's the way you gotta kind of think about it. It's hard. Like, yeah, wait, you're my mom. You know, you gave birth. Like, you were there for me when I fell. You clean my wounds, all these things. But the truth is that, like, technically she's not your mom, you know? And it's like, amen, and it hurts a lot. But you have to come to grips that's just not true. And, of course, she might be awesome for that. I'm not saying people at your church aren't awesome. I don't know if they are or not. But the truth is if they're not right, then they're not your mom. Like, it's not true, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's hard. And too, since, like I said, I went home, and, like, for three days, I sat in my bed, like, oh, my gosh, God, everything's wrong in the fetal position for, like, days. Because I literally just cried my eyeballs out. And I called everyone I knew in my phone book that knew anything about God. And when people can't give you answers, mm -hmm. that's when you need to just forget it all and stop being emotional. And it's, it, at first, it's okay. But after a while, it's like, this is your soul. It's your salvation. So there's a, comes a point where you have to put it all aside and be like, forget it, and I want God. Yeah. yeah.
Mm. So it's okay. You don't have to make a decision right now, but you know, because you know the truth. You know, and I think when you really study it out, you're gonna know. God's gonna make it evident. So. Yeah, and God gives you free will. He yeah. gives you the scriptures. He makes sure everyone has an opportunity. He makes sure like you got it. He gave it to you. Now it's up to you. Like you have free will. So. Yeah. And like I said, you know, just write down any questions. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Ponder over it. Pray about it. Write down everything you feel. Tell God everything you feel. And write down any questions you have. Like even if you don't know the scripture, but you kind of get the gist of what it says. Like believe in something something okay write it down and we'll look for it and we mm -hmm. can do that together mm -hmm. and yeah. bible gateway too you can write it on there yeah just write it down bible gateway yeah, yeah. i already know about bible gateway oh okay cool oh, okay you just type in yeah believe and then whatever scripture is and you can talk about it yeah hmm. it's, how do you yeah. feel about doing that it's like i still like my old lifestyle though yeah like Especially, like, with the whole boy crazy thing, that's gonna, I don't know if that's ever gonna go away. Because, like, I like guys a lot. And, like, if I go into McDonald's and see a cute guy, I'm like, oh my god, he's not cute! Like, mm -hmm. but with this doctrine, it's like, you can't do that. So. Well, basically, Jesus just called everyone who was hard line and he told them things. Like, he told people what they didn't want to hear. He's like, what? You know, you're rich, give up everything you have if you want to follow me. And mm -hmm. it was up to them if they wanted to do it. <laughs> this guy went and he was just like, he was all depressed, you know what I mean? And yeah, it's, did. God's going to tell you the same thing. God's giving you the same opportunity. Like, it's up to you if you want to be hardline about the scriptures. Like, we're, all we're doing is showing you scriptures about what Jesus said. If yeah. Jesus is straight up, we're just letting you know what the scriptures say, and it's up to you if you want to follow them or not. Um, I don't think that if you become baptized, you become a disciple, that you're going to have a sad, depressing life. I think you're going to have a lot of fun and you know i think it's great like i'm excited for everything i get to do i'm excited for mm -hmm. you know we still hang out we still have fun and it's up to you like if you want to hold on to that fun that can hurt you and put you in danger i don't know what, what you're into and stuff but or do you want to have fun where you're safe and you're happy and you're pure and you're having an amazing life and if you're doubting it like um if you're like, man, I don't know if I can change this. Like, I love doing this. I love doing that. Like, you got to think about, like, where's your faith at then? Do you really believe in God? Like, where's your deep, true faith? Or are you just hanging on to, I'm safe, so I'm going to go sin it up. Like, it's not about that. It's about mm -hmm. what the scriptures say. Yeah. And if you feel like, wow, then I guess my faith isn't all that there. Um, then I would pray. I would advise you to pray about it. Read your Bible more and, and just, you know, develop faith. Develop a relationship with God. And, and you're going to be amazed at what God does with that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you gotta deny yourself too. Go yeah, I was gonna say, um <laughs> I love your honesty, it's really refreshing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's so blatant. It's, really like, uh, <laughs> it's, awesome, it's awesome. very refreshing. It's, it's really cool. good. It's yeah, really, cool. really good. A lot of people don't have that. Yeah. It's really, really good. Yeah. Um so yeah, but I love that and I love even how like um you said you're like, I'm workers it, we do have men in the church by the way. I just yeah. wanted to let you know. <laughs> 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 No, but aside from that, I just wanted to say, like, what I love about your honesty, um, honesty is good. You see where you're at, and you're like, to be honest, yeah. this is just the issue. I just don't like this. Like, okay, yeah. good, okay, let's deal with it, you know? Um, that's great, um, but I think you, even how, like, um, you're like, well, I'm holding on to this because this is what I've known my mm -hmm. whole life. Um, and it's hard letting go because we've all had to do that. Yeah. Um, but even how you're like, I'm holding on to this before, and how you're, you say you didn't pray. So your whole entire you haven't been praying. So you haven't been working with relationship with God, but you're holding on strongly to what um, to what people have taught you. Yeah. Um, so if you're not working on your relationship with God and not going out in terms of praying at least, um, and you're like, oh, I just want to hold on to my life. Like, do you see how you're holding on to what's comfortable and easiest for you as opposed to what scriptures say? Because if you were close to God and really wanting to be with Him, um, yeah, you would still want to hold on to your life. There was that would still be there, but you would also have a desire to change. Um, and so, even just like when you say things like, "Oh, I don't pray," or, da -da -da, or oh, "I want to hold on to my whole life," which everybody does, <laughs> or, "I want to hold on to my own life," and I want to hold on to this doctor because this is what I know. You just want to hold on to your old life. Well, yeah. But deep inside, the fact that you're wrestling is because part of you knows that this is true. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't be wrestling. You just right. blow it off like this is full nonsense. Blow out of their mind. You know? yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But it shows that you're wrestling yeah. you're because wrestling I don't think it's even a doctrine issue. I think it's just you just know this is true, but you don't want to give up. 
right. life. Um, but so that's what I would just encourage you. What Michelle said is a great idea. Write down all your questions. Write down all your concerns and pray about it. And what's that if you feel too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and absolutely. Every single one of us has gone through the whole thing. You're not crazy. You're not alone. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not unusual. It's good that you're wrestling. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. That's biblical. That's what people do with the scriptures. Um, so it's good that you're wrestling. But just write down the questions. Write down the references of what you've been taught or what you've been told, and we'll go over it. Um, Because at the end of the day, if what we're teaching is wrong, then we want to know, you know? So (laughs) so then go ahead and write down those scriptures so we can look at them together, you know? Um, And go ahead and just write those down. Write down your concerns. Be like, well, I don't like this. Why do you do this? Why I'm concerned about this? Um, Just write it all down, and we'll go through all of it together. Um, We're here to help you become a disciple. But really just be honest with you. You're really honest. Mm -hmm. um, But I just want you to be honest with yourself and be like, okay, is this really a doctrine issue, or is it that I just don't want to let go of my life? That's why I'm not praying, because I know the moment I talk to God, I'm gonna, he's going to show me exactly where I'm at. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Okay. So, just do it that way. But, again, it's normal. You're not crazy. Um, and just write everything down, and we'll go through it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, how do you feel about today? Do you feel a little better? Do you feel angry? Or how do you feel? I feel like I want to cry. Aww. I don't want to cry. Mm. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. It's okay to cry. Okay. 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 I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to cry. Can I hug you? I want to hug you. Oh it's so badly. It's okay to be hugged. It's okay to cry. Let it out. You know, like, you just got to pour everything out. Like, lay everything out to God. And why are you crying? Uh, because it's spiritual warfare. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And now my face is ugly. <laughs> no, <laughs> your face is insane. Uh, your face is insane. Uh, your face is insane, girl. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, yeah. I'm still making a YouTube video, though. Go for it. Pray about it first, but yeah, I mean, that's your heart's desire. Whatever desire to the God, you know, Whatever it's going to bring you to salvation and bring you to Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to go skin four goats, you know, and just bring it to Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have a hand that's a tissue. Oh. I wish I had a hand. I was looking for it. I was like, who's this? Mm-hmm. I don't have I can get you some. So where are they? I have a tissue, but it's oh. filled with dessert. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna eat it later and I couldn't eat at this time. Oh. You have like the weirdest things like oh, in your bag. Right. Right. Why well, wrote you these these notes? Okay, let me get you my number. I will love you. What does it say? It says we love you. Are you Mexican? Oh, no, that's it. You. Hey, you speak you Spanish. Spanish. You should know. That's it oh, upside yes, down. Mexican? Oh, oh. Mm-hmm. in Spanish they do that. I thought it was the eye with the heart. My grandma? On your on what side? Your battle mom. On my dad's side. She always comes to our house and cooks us more food than we could ever eat. <laughs> that's awesome. Wait, I love that about my grandma. My grandma. Oh, okay. Yeah. Amen, girl. That's awesome. That's great that you can just pour it out. And yeah. It's okay. It's okay to do that. It helps us a lot. It actually harms us when we keep everything inside. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, the, like the the study you guys read, the scriptures you guys read in the last study, like the scripture said that um, it cuts. You know, it's mm-hmm. sharper than a double-edged sword. Yeah. You know, and I think it's. Very true, you yeah. know. At first I didn't get it. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I cut. Went on to the next study, and then I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Like, and I get it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and to this day, like, scripture's still cut. Like, I'll get um mm-hmm. together and have Bible studies, and it's like, ah, like, why am I doing this? And it just hurts. But yeah. it's refreshing once, you know, you get to what, you know. It's once you're done with it. Yeah. <laughs> once you follow the Bible. Oh. So, yeah. Um, I saw my name. What is that? Just prayer list. Okay. Yeah.
Yeah. I had to go backwards. I had G A Y A N A, but it's the other way. Tiana. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. So when can you get together again? Like, when are you free? And I'm pretty, pretty much free any day. Like Sam was talking about doing the pool party. Yeah, you well, should come gonna, and hang out with us. Yeah, yeah. come and hang out. We can chill. Take we can hang out with you now. too. Where do you live at? I'm in Carson. Do you live by yourself? Not that far. I'm not living with my dad. Oh, you live with your dad. Awesome. Carson is not that far. You're down the four or five. Yeah, I would love to hang out with you. Do something fun. Yeah. You know, yeah. what do you like doing? Do you like ice cream? I love ice cream. I do. And I hope and there's people tennis. who doesn't like ice cream. Oh my god. I don't think so. I've heard of one or two You people. like what? Can we, maybe we can go out for ice cream. Like we maybe can play tennis. Go for ice cream I'm, and yeah. do a study. Something like that. Yeah. That's fun. I will cheer you on. <laughs> you don't like ice cream? 